In this video, I will be turning your designs into real websites. For our first episode, we will be coding this amazing design I found on Dribbble made by Oxeni. Shout out to Oxeni for making this video possible. Let's get into it. First, we need to choose which framework we are going to use to build this website. I will use React just because it's the most popular out there. To initialize the project, we will be using a modern, fast build tool called Vite. To initialize the React project using Vite, you need to make sure you have Node.js installed. So once you have Node.js installed, you can open a terminal in a desired project location and type the following command. Now we'll select React, we'll choose TypeScript and our project is initialized. We'll open the project using VS Code and to install necessary dependencies, open a terminal and run npm install. To run the application locally, type npm run dev and now you'll be able to access the application through your browser. Before we start doing anything, let's delete the app.css file and let's delete all HTML from app.tsx file. We can also delete all styles from index.css and let's see our starting point. Now I'm sometimes lazy to come up with names for CSS classes and that's why we'll use VindyCSS, CSS framework that allows us to write utility classes inside our HTML files. To install the package, let's run this command. Then register the plugin inside your Vite configuration file. And lastly, make sure to import virtual VindyCSS inside main TSX file. Now let's analyze the design we'll build. First, there's a video covering the entire screen. Then the video is masked by this curve shape, then the hero text and navigation appear and these two images slide into view. When you're building a website with animations, it's sometimes useful to start building the website backwards. We can see how the website will look once the animation is finished, build the entire layout and only after that we can add the animations. Homepage layout consists of four parts, navigation, hero text, map images and the boat video. We can group hero text, map images and boat video into one component called home and keep navigation separate in a component called navbar. First we can call navbar and home components in our app file, then we should create component files for both navbar and home component and to do that I'll use react functional component syntax. Let's define a function that returns JSX and export it. We're going to do the same for home component. Once we're done let's not forget to import them in our app file and we can see that they're being rendered. Let's customize the navbar. To create the iStack logo, I will use Figma star tool. And for the arrow icon, I will be using icons provided in material design icons. Once you have both icons in your design file, you can right click on the objects and choose copy as SVG. Now we can create component files for logo and arrow right icon. And inside the component templates, just return the SVG we copied. But before we import these components, let's add Windy classes and style the navbar. If you're having trouble understanding Windy CSS syntax, these styles I wrote here would look exactly like this in CSS. To see all possible Windy utility classes, check out their documentation page. Let's import the logo and arrow right icon and see the changes. Now the only thing left to do is to create navigation links and to create the sign in button. Looks pretty good so far, but we need to change the font. To add a custom font in our application, we can visit Google Fonts website, find a similar font, select styles and we'll get snippets of CSS that we can use. Now import those snippets inside index.css and let's assign font family to entire body tag. Just make sure to import index.css after windy styles inside main file to make sure our custom font works. Now inside our home file, let's render hero text, map images and both video components. Now same as before, let's create a file for every component and render simple text inside of each file. Just remember to import components we just created inside home. If we open the browser, we'll notice that the components are not visible. That's because navigation is rendering above them. So let's add the padding to the top of hero text. And now we can see that they are visible. Let's adjust hero text component with the description and the headline. For sizing the text, I'll use viewport width unit. That means that the text will scale depending on the device viewport width. To finish up the hero text section, we just need to add the compass icon. I will create it the same way I created the iStack logo. I will export the icon using Figma as SVG, I'll create a component file and I'll use that component inside our HTML template. Now we'll edit the boat video component. First I'll import the render video that Oxeni sent us into our asset folder and then we'll create the video and source tags that will reference the video video we just imported. Let's also add styles to our video tag and assign autoplay, muted and loop attributes. Now in order to finish layout, we just need to import map images into assets folder and then create image tags that will reference the images we just imported. And now the layout is finally done. For animations, I rely on open source animation library called Framer Motion. To install it, let's run this command. Framer Motion transforms HTML elements into motion elements. 
Let's animate the height of hero tags component. To do that, let's add the layout attribute, set initial height to zero, animate height to unset, and let's customize the transition attribute with delay equal to a variable called animation start. And let's set duration to one second. Now let's define animation start variable inside utilities folder, and let's not forget to import a variable into hero tags component. Now we just want to move the padding top style to a child div, and let's look at the results. Now let's make each individual text revealed animation with frame or motion variants. First let's create a reveal variant with hidden and revealed states. And then we can use these variant states by referencing the variant object and by setting initial and animated state names. Let's also add a slightly larger delay to this animation in comparison to animation start. We can now see that the text appears and translates on the Y axis. I'll do the same thing for the description text, but I will just increase delay. To animate the navbar, let's add the opacity animation to the entire component. Now let's add reveal animation to every element inside navbar and let's make each reveal animation trigger with a slight delay. To do that, let's first add reveal variants to a wrapper div and inside transition property, let's add stagger children property with a value of 0.1. To define child elements that should get animated, we should transform them to motion elements and add the reveal variants. We can see now that every navbar element has staggered animation. To make map images appear from the sides, we want to animate their X position and we want to animate their opacity. We can see how map images appear from the sides. To animate the video, we want to mask it and animate the mask position using clip pad CSS property. Windy CSS provides support for defining custom animations and keyframes, which we can define in Windy config file. Let's create a file and export defined config from Windy CSS helpers and extend the theme with our custom animation called clip from top animation. To define it, let's use custom clip keyframe animation, define duration, easing and delay, and let's specify that the animated element should stay in the last keyframe using forwards. Now let's define the keyframes for clip animation. At 0% we want to clip the video with an ellipse shape with these values and at 100% we want to change the ellipse shape with these values for the best looking results. Now in the boat video we can use animate utility from Windy CSS and write the name of our animation. And finally let's see the finished website. Hey guys, I hope this video was useful to you and you learned something new today. If you made it this far, please consider liking and hitting that subscribe button. Have a great day and until next time.